I think this is the last thing I'll, I'll talk about here. Um, it's um, general culture of my slide. So it's coming back to something we mentioned with wrongly earlier, um, short and long-term culturing. Um, so short-term, I guess, is just a, a one or two days. Uh, long-term can be much, much longer than that. So in general, for culturing adult myocytes, um, people have asked about what substrate will they grow on um, or adhere to, I should say. Um, and really, we find the only things that these myocytes attach well to is, is laminin. Um, we've tried other things like gelatin and different types of collagen. Um, they do have some adherence, but the adherence is much stronger with laminin. And we usually use between 5 to 10 uh, micromolar uh, laminin in, in PBS, which we will then uh, incubate on the uh, cell culture surface for at least an hour in an incubator at 37 degrees uh, before we then wash that and plate the myocytes on top of that. Uh, and after that, they, the myocytes will adhere um, within around an hour. After plating the cells, so this is once the cells are now adhered and in culture, um, it's, they don't always adhere that strongly, especially initially. Um, so it, it's really important to try and keep the disturbances of those, uh, those plates to, to a minimum. So try to avoid rocking, uh, shaking or, or swirling or, or too many vibrations. Uh, all these things can, can just dislodge your myocytes um, and uh, then you'll, you'll lose yield from that. Um, and at a critical time uh, when these things become more important, of course, is when you're actually taking the, the plate out to change the media. So, for example, they're, they're in plating media, which has FBS, and you want to change that now to culture media. Um, and this is a time when actually a lot of people find that their myocytes will uh, look wonderful beforehand, and they change the media, they, they take a look under the microscope, and, and now they're all either gone or round or, or both. Um, so one thing we find is that myocytes, especially early on, they, they are not very uh, happy with exposure to air. And so uh, for this reason, it's, it's, it's important to change the media of your myocytes one well at a time. So rather than aspirating all your wells in your 48 well plate or whatever you're using, uh, and then going back to add media, please, please um, do it one well at a time. So aspirate, then add media. Um, and, and while you do this, try not to tilt the plate too much as well. Because when the plate is tilted, what can happen is the, the top, re the kind of uppermost region of each well is then exposed to air. And that happens in every well. So by the time you've gone through all of your wells, that top region has been exposed to air so much that all your myocytes have, 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 have died or, or dislodged. So yeah, don't tilt too much. Uh, and try and, if you're using an aspirator, for example, a vacuum assisted aspirator, uh, try and turn that down so it's not aspirating too fast because that fast flow of media can actually dislodge cells as well. So the aspiration should be relatively slow and then add media for the same reason slowly back to the well. Um, and that's most easily done by touching the side of the well with your pipette tip just so that the, the media isn't blowing down directly onto the cells which will make them dislodge. Um, it's just added gently over, over them. Now, this is something which I think is worth mentioning as well, is that once the cells are attached, it's, it's really not easy to detach them in, in, and keep them alive. So some people have come with um, experiment plans where they will keep the cells in culture for 48 hours and then detach them and plan to do things like ionoptics, functional assays on them. And, and I just can't recommend this because... Um, whatever you try to use, uh, that could be trypsin, Accutase, other methods, you will tend to kill most of your cells before they actually detach using these protocols. So um, once they're stuck down, I think it's best to leave them stuck down. Um, and I think wrongly mentioned some tricks that you might be able to do with glass cover slips, uh, placing things upside down, which uh, I'm sure she would, uh, she would describe much better than I can. But I, I think um, that, yeah, once they're ad adhered to that surface, then they're probably best left as they are. And, and as wrongly mentioned before as well, it's, it's really noticeable that myocytes attach less well to, to glass surfaces than they, than they do to plastic. Uh, and this could be a problem for people who want to do imaging. Um, so one thing that you, you can do is uh, IBD is a company and, and they do some great products, um, one of which is tissue culture plastics which these myocytes 
they actually do adhere as if they are plastic, but they have the optical properties which are, which are very similar to glass. And so you can still have good images from them. Uh, and this is often what we use when we're doing our, our imaging. Unfortunately, um, Ibidi don't offer um, tissue culture plastics like this, which are quite thin enough to use on an iron optics system yet, um, as far as I know. So that's, uh, that's, that's not an option, unfortunately. Uh, so for iron optics, it would still necessarily be, be glass, I think. Um, I'll mention here, one of the things we do find is uh, there's, a, there's a lipid supplement which we have in our paper, which we, uh, which we sometimes add to the cells for particularly long-term culture. I think I'll mention this on the next slide. Uh, you might find your cells adhere better with that. So it, it's worth a try to glass. Um, we, we've sometimes seen that as well, if you keep lipid in the, in the culture media. Another thing to mention, um, often when people try to fix the cells just prior to imaging using formaldehyde, the, the cells, for whatever reason, will, will dislodge at this point. And, um, that, and of course, that's, that can be a problem for imaging. So, so what we tend to do is actually, rather than aspirating the media and adding formaldehyde containing uh, buffer back, we actually prepare double concentrated formaldehyde. So if you want the final concentration to be 4% formaldehyde, you can prepare 8% in culture media. And then you can actually add this slowly without aspirating, add this slowly directly to the normal culture media that the cells are already in, um, in an equal volume, so that then the final concentration of formaldehyde will be 4%, and, and then just leave that for 15 to 20 minutes for, to, for the cells to fix. And you should have less of them falling off this way. Would anyone like to comment here before I go on to the next slide? Yeah, I think uh, you summarize it very, very well. I think um, they like uh, cell myocyte like the plastics uh, way more than they like glass. Mm -hmm. So I think this is all common experience, and I think some um, you know that's maybe something for company wise can be try to you know collaborate with other company like you're saying that a big uh, tissue culture plastic. Maybe they can make that uh, um, so they offer to user to use in the future. But in our hand, what we do reverse culture, uh, a reverse way that's actually, we can culture them in the plastic and we just cut it off once we fix the cell and then you know step on the cover glass on the other side and so we can flip it for imaging but that's only for doing immunohistochemistry if right, you right. functional me measurement that's not possible yeah here so chemistry work well so wrongly if i if i may just uh, uh butt in here for a little bit so in when you do your functional experiments in your lab how do you attach them to uh, to glass, you know, if you have to do calcium transients or patch clamp studies, do you do you still use laminin and at what concentration? Do you know? So we're using laminin still, but we're using I don't have a concentration exactly on top of my head, but we're using actually double the concentration which we were using for red. So okay. it's expensive because that's not cheap. Yes. Yeah. So, so I mean, the one just for the, the uh, for doing the contractility, right? Okay, uh, I mean, probably one thing that I, w I would just add to that is that when we do this, uh, this is I was just curious how you do it is when we do it here, we tend to buy the laminated cover slips, uh, and then we just drop them on those. Uh, mm -hmm. so you, you can buy those already, uh, pre made, and uh, then we just drop those cover slips into the uh into the dish well into the perfusion chamber so um so that's one of the things that may be helpful for others and it's quite quite easy to just purchase and generally our experience is if digestion if you do a little bit over digest cell they generally attach less well yeah. Uh, and those just, you know, maybe slightly under digest, if you will, or something like that. So you don't strip the myocyte, the adhesion protein surrounding it, you know, completely clean. And that generally will attach a little bit better uh, than yeah. one, you know, digest it a bit more. I, I completely agree. Yeah, I completely that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. 
Great, thanks. Uh, uh, Davo, where do you buy those um, nominated cover slips from? Uh, I'd, I'd have to remember now. Okay. You can <laughs> I mean, put I, it into I, the, uh, into the feedback, can, written feedback. Yes, I can send a link if you like uh, later on. Great. Okay. Um, so um, we tend to use an M199 based media for our um, for culturing of our of our Maya sites, um, and the, the specific details for that are are in are in the paper. But it's basically we we have the M19 media which we add in uh, some some BSA um, and pen strap if necessary, um, and the, and um, I add in this uh, insulin mix, so it's insulin transfer in, and and selenium, which uh, which I I do think that the cells are, are healthier when when uh, kept in. Uh, media with that supplement as well and sometimes we add lipid as well so I, I again this is in the paper it's uh, it's a defined uh, lipid mix which I think we buy from it, it's originally Gibco and uh, particularly for um, long-term culture we find that this improves yields um, now this is touching back on what wrongly was already discussed. So it's, it's the idea of uh, you know what um, buffering systems and, and what carbon dioxide uh, concentrations are our cells best kept in. So um, media, your your average cell media, which most people use, whether that's DMM or, or, or MEM or, or whatever, for cell culture um, that would usually be buffered with Earl salts. If you look into the description fine print, it will say something about Earl salts. Uh, and uh, these salts, they're specialized to, to, to try and buffer the, uh, the media pH at around 7.4 in an in a environment of 5% carbon dioxide, which I think is probably the most common, at least to my knowledge, carbon dioxide concentration of, of most tissue culture incubators. We, we have done some testing, and I, I, I've put up our, our results on the, on the, on the right-hand side here. So you can actually use Earl's or, or Hank's buffered salts to, to get different pHs in your, in your media. So um, I've, I've got here um, cells growing at pH 6.7, uh, 7, 7.4, and 7.9. So the first two of those are actually um, the Hank's buffered media. So we brought them especially. And, and um, if you keep Hank's buffered media at a at a concentration of CO2 of 5%, your, your pH drops to around 6.7. Um, and then as, as wrongly mentioned earlier, if you have Hanks buffered media at a carbon dioxide concentration of around 2%, your, your pH is around seven then. Um, and then when you come onto your, your L buffered medias, which are the more common ones, uh, again, if, you, if your um, carbon dioxide concentration is, is, is 5%, then your pH should be around 7.4. If you use a 2% carbon dioxide concentration for those Earl's buffered medias, the, the pH will raise to uh, 7.9. And so um, on this question of what's the best carbon dioxide uh, concentration to grow cells in, I, th I think you have to be very careful about what buffering system you're using, basically. Uh, but since I think most people will be using Earl's salts, then at least in, in our experience, uh, this is the best, and, and the best carbon dioxide concentration will be five percent, which keeps you your your pH at around seven point four. Um, and so on 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 these on these bar charts on the right hand side, so the top bar charts are all uh, done at day three. So this is cells after three days of culture, and then cells at, after a week of culture, um, and you can see that. Um, even after three days of culture, you have you know a good number of your cells have, have, have died already, even in the in, in the best setting. So so don't be upset if you see cell death in long term culture. It, it, I, I think it's almost unavoidable. But we, we, we see that keeping cells at around pH seven point four is 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 probably optimal. So these are the red bars, and, and certainly um, after long term culture, we think that that's the best. Uh, the best thing to do. Now, the interesting thing we found was that um, keeping cells at lower pH actually keeps them more rod-shaped looking uh, for longer. Uh, and um, even at seven days, there's lots of rod-shaped cells there. But what we actually find is some of those rod-shaped cells are actually dead. Um, so although they look like they're there and they actually look like healthy myocytes, they are dead. And you can, you can test this uh, by using live dead stains and things which uh, stains which should not be permeable 
to, to a live cell, I think is ethidium. Um, you can see that the, the nuclei of these rod-shaped cells are, are staining very brightly red, which shows that they are dead, even though they are still there. Um, so I think long story short, um, we prefer M19 medium, uh, and we prefer Earl's buffered salts and, and an ambient carbon dioxide concentration of 5% that gives us the, the best conditions for these cells in culture. Um, now, um, I'll just go on to, to talk about this, uh, this, what you might want to use these cells for. So I think as, as, as um, Romali and Devor have pointed out, um, if you want to do most physiological type studies in, in cultured myocytes, it's really best done as quickly as possible. Um, because after just a couple of days in, in, in culture, the, the sarcomeric structures and the T-tubule uh, arrangements are, are very quickly degraded in these cells. Uh, and, and some people will call this as remodeling or de-differentiation, whichever group you happen to be in. Um, but if, you're, um, if you want to do your experiments before that sets in, then, then do that as quickly as possible, really in the first two days, um, if, if, if that's uh, possible. Um, however, if you, if you keep the cells in culture for longer, and, and this is actually can, can be quite easily done, um, even with adult mouse cells, and, um, and they, they will survive. Um, so what we tend to do in this case is we'll, we'll keep BDM or blebistatin, as we use blebistatin now, uh, on the cells for at least 24 hours just to allow them to adhere strongly and settle down. And then we'll, we'll change that culture media to culture media without BDM and blebistatin. So of course, after this transition, you'll see, you'll see a few cells dying, but the ones which, uh, which stay adhered, you can actually keep those in culture for, for weeks, in fact. Um, and as long as you keep changing the media carefully every, every two days, um, then, then they can be kept. And, and what actually happens to them in this, uh, in this situation, you can see on the, on the bottom left, um, the, by after about a week in culture, the, the sarcomeric uh, striations, you can see they've almost completely gone. Um, but then after, after a longer time in culture, you can sometimes see this, this what we call redifferentiation. So the sarcomeric structures actually come back uh, and the cells, they look much more neonatal-like. Um, and if they're next to each other, they'll form uh, links. So uh, um, I, I forget the name now, um, but they will contract in, in, in synchrony. Um, and spontaneously. So, so they're much more like um, neonatal cells in, in some ways now. And um, how, physiolog how physiological this is, is, is a, a very valid question. Um, but um, for people who are interested in this process, uh, you can study this in vitro. Uh, and um, so in, in this image, um, it's taken about three weeks for this process to happen. But actually, if you put... Um, 10% FBS uh, into the system after about day one or day two, uh, you'll see an accelerated version of this. So even after, after about one week, you'll start to see the striations will be reappearing and, uh, and, and cells will be contracting spontaneously. Um, some people are interested in this process. And so um, I, I really think that this is one way that you can, you can study it. If so, um, how physiological it is, 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 a, is an open question, I think. That's all I really have to say for now. Um, so uh, please fire any questions or, or criticisms at me. So uh, thank you. You provide really much of your experience and comprehensive uh, information and a lot of uh, trade secrets. And thank you. So I think we all agreed, you know, in general rule, um, mouse mouse, I, it's great for fresh but when they come to culture, it's always tricky. And so in our laboratory, generally we try to get away with that, uh, you know, not to using um, too much of a mouse mouse culture unless it's absolutely the only way to do it. So sometimes we do it in such a way, it's a little bit, you know, reverse, like we try to get the plates uh, for, um, uh, reverse for the adhesions and for in his chemistry, but for functional, it's hard. So generally what we can do in this case is 
we can manipulate whatever the treatment we needed uh, in the in vivo condition. For example, typically if we want to use it most, uh, mostly you want to take advantage of a certain transgenic overexpression or a knockout animal. And then on that background, you test your treatment, you test whatever. So in some occasion, we actually do reverse. So we do our treatments and all those things in the vivo in in situ, so in the animal bites alive, and then isolate their, their cell after treatments, and then you got to control cell. So then this way you get away with you have to culture the cell in a long period of time. So that's actually one way uh, people can consider. But again, it's also depend on the treatment, depend on condition. This may not apply to all solution. But one thing we find is certain time we can give the drug, give the uh, whatever treatment we need uh, in situ to the animal and then isolate cell. Then you only have a fresh isolate myocyte, which you can do, you know, functional measurements as well as all the biochemistry, molecular biology experiments without worry about myocyte start de differentiate. Great. I mean, I, I, I completely agree. And um, there's um, one other thing which, which in our lab we do quite a lot of is if, if, we, want, if we want to know overexpression um, assays, we employ the AAV9 system, uh, which exactly as you say, Ron, we, you can then achieve an overexpression uh, in, in vivo. So we could put our whatever construct we want to put inside an AAV virus and inject it into the adult mouse. And then a week later, for example, isolate myocytes from that mouse and, and do our studies immediately then rather than trying to do this whole thing in, in culture. Um, yeah. and I think that's, that's probably a much better way if, if, if that's available to people. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's actually, you know, you can get the mouse out without what consideration of your culture too many days, they start changing it and then that becomes something not quite myocyte already. Um, so I think that's a one way and AAV technology right now is just so robust and it's wonderful. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just uh, agree with everything you've, you've both said. <laughs> I think there's pretty clear conclusion at the end of this that you probably shouldn't be culturing cardiac myocytes and then hoping that you will get the, the same results functionally as you do from myocytes that were just isolated. The, uh, the one question that I have for Matt is, and, and this is a bit of a, a joke in a way, but it, there's a bit of truth in the question. Do you think we should just uh, forget about all these different differentiation protocols for iPS cells and just uh, stick the iPS cells into 10% FBS and then wait for cardiac uh, Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> It wasn't a serious question, so I'm not sure I, re I, I demand a response as such. But, but I, I, think, I think there is a serious point to be made here in that. Is, is, is this process something akin to what actually does happen in maturation? Um, and, and does this sometimes happen in, in, in a heart? For, for example, pa patients who have a heart failure, they, they can be put onto this device, which will then, um, it's called a left ventricular assisted device in LVAD. Right, which then actually takes over some of the uh, contractile uh, functions of, of the heart, right? So the LVAD is there for um, allowing the heart to rest. Uh, and one of the concepts I think is that that resting period, is, is that going to allow this kind of process that we're seeing in vitro? Is, is this happening then? Because what sometimes happens to those patients, they can then be taken off the LVAD and their heart function is, is then almost improved. Mm. After that. So, so what's going on then? It's, it's, it's an interesting question. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know <laughs> the answer really. But, um, but certainly we do see when you have these cells in what seems to be a very um, undifferentiated state, uh, and then you can almost follow a process of, of redifferentiation. Uh, there, there really is, I think, something interesting in that. Um, and whether it does relate to anything which actually happens in an in vivo, a real setting is, I think, a question which, it, which might be worth exploring. Sure. Well, I, I suspect their electrophysiology might be quite different as well. And that's another 
problem yeah. with this uh, with this approach yeah. because you may induce arrhythmias as a result of this. But but yes, that's something to be considered by probably others. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs>